Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a Diophantin equation, an exponential Diophantin equation. Diophantin equations are fun, and I believe I made a video on Diophantin equations, so you can go ahead and check that out here. But exponential Diophantin equations are more interesting, and most of the time they're harder. But this problem is fairly manageable. So we're looking for integer solutions to this equation, positive and negative, they're all acceptable. So here's the question. How can you add two powers of two and still get a power of two? Let's go ahead and check out some cases. For example, what about two plus four? That's equal to six. Is that a power of two? No. What about one plus two? That's a three. Is that a power of two? No. Eight and 128 are both powers of two, but their sum is 136. That's not a power of two either. You need to know your powers of two at least through 2 to the power 10, which is 1024. That's kind of easy to remember because it has a 10 in it, right? So we can think binary here and write a number that is a power of 2 like 1, 0, 0, and then another number with 1s and zeros, but not the same number of zeros, maybe 1, 0, and their sum is going to be 1, 1, 0. Obviously, this is not a power of 2 because powers of 2 only contain 1, 1 in their binary representation. Anyways, let's go ahead and look at it from another perspective. So we're going to be doing a little bit of algebra here. Of course, this also involves some number theory, modular arithmetic, so fun stuff. Let's dive right into it. So now, suppose you have uh, two numbers, x and y, and let x be greater than y. And suppose you have this following sum, 2 to the power x plus 2 to the power y. I'm just going to show you why it's you're not going to get a power of 2 by adding two different powers of 2. So since uh, y is smaller, we can go ahead and take out a 2 to the power y here. And that's going to give us 2 to the power x minus y plus 1. Great. We use this strategy a lot, especially for solving problems that involve powers of 2. I believe I also made a video on uh, the Fenton equation a long time ago. I think it was a math competition or Olympiad problem from Russia. Anyways, if I find the link, I'll include it here. So notice that this is a power of 2, right? Uh, can I write power as PWR? This is a power of 2, but this is one more than a power of 2. Hmm, that's interesting. Can that be a power of 2? No, because powers of 2 cannot be 1 apart except, except for 1 and 2. They're 1 apart, right? So after that, they kind of get uh, farther and farther away. So look at the difference, 1, 2, and then 4, bigger and bigger. So that means what? That means that the smaller number must be 1. Which number is going to be 1? If y is equal to 0, think about it, then this is going to be 1. If x is equal to 0, then the other one is going to be 1. Suppose this number is equal to 1. doesn't matter. We can always arrange that. That means 2 to the power x minus y. Uh, actually, that's not imp that's not possible. <laughs> that means it's about x minus y is zero. Sorry, sorry about that. So if y is equal to zero, so suppose this number is a two. Uh oh, what am I doing? So suppose this is a. All right, I'm on eraser. So this suppose this is a two, which means this is a one, and this is a one, right? And this means that two to power x minus y is equal to one, which means x minus y is equal to zero. And by the way, uh, this doesn't have to be 1. I don't know what I'm talking about. So x equals y. So my point was, I kind of messed it up, but anyways, uh, it's, it's not possible when x and y are different. So they have to be equal. So this means 2 to the power x plus 2 to the power x equals 2 to the power 2 times 2 to the power x, which can be written as 2 to the power x plus 1. Wow, this makes sense, doesn't it? Because 2 to the power x plus 1 is a power of 2. So... The idea is then these exponents have to be equal. Otherwise, you don't get a power of 2. Okay, let's rewrite the equation. So th this means 3a equals 2b. You know the joke. I'm not going to say it because some people get upset about it. Anyways, so from here we get the following. Let's go ahead and set both of these equal to k. Then we get the following, 2 to the k plus 2 to the k equals 2 to the k plus 1, and that is equal to 2 to the power 5c. So from here, 5c becomes k plus 1, or k becomes 5c minus 1. So k equals 5c minus 1, k equals 3a, k equals 2b, and then put it all together, you're going to get the following. 
3a equals 2b equals 5c minus 1. So we're going to be solving this Diophantine equation, or you want to call it a system, whatever. Three variables. And uh, to solve it, we're going to first think about a and b. Notice that uh, the least common multiple of 3 and 2 is 6. So 3a and 2b are both multiples of 6. Make sense? So we can kind of set uh, them equal to 6m. That's fine because then in this case, a is going to be 2m and b is going to be 3m. So they're all good. But what about c? C is going to be a little problematic because we have a 5 in there. But guess what? That's going to be a linear Diophantine equation and we're going to solve it. There's a lot of different ways to approach the problem, but here is the um, approach that I'd like to show you. Isolate the 5c and write it as 6m plus 1. Now think about this equation in terms of mods. How about mod 5? So you're only thinking about the remainders when this thing, everything is divided by 5. Because if this equation is true for general integers, then it's also true for specific cases like mod 5. Mod 5, this is 0. Of course, I have to put the equivalent sign. Uh, this is a 1 mod 5, so that's going to be m, and plus 1 is going to stay. This implies m is congruent to, or some people say congruent, but I say congruent to, m is congruent to negative 1 mod 5. You can add 5 because 5 is 0, so m is congruent to 4 mod 5. What is that supposed to mean? I can express m as a number who's, uh, who leaves a remainder of 4 when divided by 5. In other words, m can be written as 5n plus 4. By the way, m and n are all integers here. Okay? So once you're able to write m like that, it's really cool because you can use this to find the other ones. How? Let's go ahead and see how that works. We have 5c equals 6m plus 1 and m is equal to 5n plus 4. Let's go ahead and plug it in. 6 times 5n plus 4 plus 1. This is going to be 30n plus 24 plus 1, which is 25. But this is 5c, so if you divide everything by 5, you get c equals 6n plus 5. So that's going to be the c value in terms of n. We have m in terms of n, but we also want to find a and b in terms of n, right? So how do you do that? Well, remember, we had 3a equals 2b, and that was equal to 5c minus 1, and that was equal to 6m. So whatever you want to use here doesn't really matter. You can use m or c. I'll, let's just use c, forget about m. And let's go ahead and use that. Since c can be written like this, I can go ahead and plug it in. 2b equals 5 times 6n plus 5 minus 1. And 2b equals 30n plus 25 minus 1, which is 24. Divide everything by 2, you get b equals 15n plus 12. That is the value of b. And to find a, you just have to do the following. You can just go ahead and divide, uh, multiply this by 2 and divide by 3. Uh, or you can just divide this by 3. Because remember, 3a is equal to 2b. So by divi dividing, you can get the a. 10n plus 8. Let's go ahead and put it all together. C is equal to 6n plus 5. And that's basically going to give you all the solutions. As you change n over the set of integers, you're going to get infinitely many solutions to this equation. Let's just uh, find one and set it, uh, test it. For example, if n is equal to 0, then from here you get a equals 8, b equals 12, and c equals 5. And is it true that 3 to the power 2 to the power 3a plus 2 to the power 2b equals 2 to the power 5c. Let's see. 2 to the power 24 plus 2 to the power 24 equals 2 to the power 25. And yes, that's true for c equals 5. So 8, 12, 5 is a possible solution to this equation. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.